Hi everyone, I hope you're all having a great week. The date of our big move is getting closer and closer and I'm hard at work not only with my other job and filming for YouTube but I'm also hard at work packing. So I'm trying to do my very best to get on top of things and ahead in terms of filming my videos so that while I'm moving I don't have to worry about making sure I have anything posted and you know it's it's really been my goal to post one video a week ever since I started and I've kept it up for over a year and a half now and I don't want to drop the ball at this juncture. <laughs> Even if I am extremely busy it's important for me to keep this going because this is part of my career and my career goals. I'm the kind of person who easily finds inspiration in the world around me and so I'm not lacking for inspiration most of the time. At this point what I'm what I'm feeling like I'm lacking is time and energy because I'm feeling a bit tired with everything that's going on but I still really enjoy painting and I'm trying to do my best to be compassionate with myself at this point in time because there's a lot going on and I need to make sure I'm taking care of myself and sometimes I just need to remind myself that the simpler I can make things the better it is for everyone involved and especially me. <laughs> My painting this week is going to be an intuitive abstract and I started my process basically by picking a shape that I had seen outside, something that I thought looked really interesting and I am basically duplicating it, or not exactly like you would see it outside, in fact it's going to look so much different that you know you wouldn't even know what it was. The shape is what got me going. And then I decided to work with a certain palette of colors and that's usually how I start. I start with either an idea in mind or if I don't really have an idea or something to inspire me, the colors that I want to use in my painting are what will guide my process when I'm first starting. So I started off by adding some quinacridone deep gold and then I added some nickel azo yellow these are two colors that I find work well together and the nickel azo yellow in particular helps to make the quinacridone deep gold even brighter. At this point I've decided to go over the initial lines that I drew with my pencil using some light red. And this is a color that is uh, very similar to the two colors that I used initially. I just want to try and start emphasizing those lines that I drew in the beginning and I'm going to do that using this light red and I'm also at one point going to start adding some neutral tint. And here I go with the neutral tint. So an interesting question came to me from my husband actually because he watches my videos every week and I'm very thankful for his support. He was wondering uh, if neutral tint was, if there were many different types of neutral tint. So when I'm talking about neutral tint, um, and I, I thought it would be good for me to bring this up, I'm actually talking about a specific color in the watercolor line by Daniel Smith. And the actual name of this watercolor paint is neutral tint. So it's not just, you know, a neutral, version of a specific color um, that I'm creating or it, it is really specifically a paint that's already pre-mixed and it's called neutral tint. I initially bought neutral tint as a color that I could mix in to create skin tones but I love the color so much that I do tend to use it a lot in many of my paintings and I prefer using it to black for instance. It is more neutral, if you will. Um, it's dark without being too dark and I really like the colors that I can mix with it. Once I was done adding my neutral tint, you probably noticed that I added some drops of water and then I came in with a piece of paper towel and I started to blot my paper a little bit to lift some of the paint and create some textures. 
I then let my paper dry completely and I went back in with more color to intensify the different areas. Here's that neutral tint again, this time in a much less diluted form. Notice that as I'm painting this line on my paper, I'm holding my brush at the very end of the brush handle. And this is to keep things more loose, if you will. When I want to make an area wider, I press down on the brush and this increases the size of the brush head. The brush bristles come down and then I can widen the area that I want to paint. Once I'm done darkening my lines, I let the background dry completely once again. Using my mop brush and just some clean water, I then go over the entire background once again. This helps to sort of soften up the lines even though I want to maintain them in their dark form and it helps to blend some of that darkness a little bit outwards. And that is going to make sure that everything in the painting stays un um, cohesive and more unified. Now that my paper is completely wet again, I go in with some of the other colors that I added initially and I start to work on intensifying those as well. Because the paper is wet, as I add more color and I touch the colors uh, into each other, they will blend and I love the way they create sort of, um, in this case, darker versions of themselves and they, they help to, that, that blending motion helps again to create some more unity and it keeps everything very cohesive. Water is our friend when we're painting with watercolors for sure, so I tend to use a lot of it and I use it not only because it's really helpful in blending colors like I'm doing right now, but it also creates different textures and that's part of my process. <laughs> it's, I let the paper and the paint and the water work for me to create textures that will then help guide me in my process. Just one final last pass with neutral tint and once I'm done with this, I'll be ready to let the background dry and then move on to the next part of my process. Now it's time for me to shake things up a little bit with a complementary color. I start by dabbing a little bit of that cobalt turquoise blue light paint that I love so much. 
And after I've put a little bit on, I will go ahead and use my brush like I'm doing right now to start spreading it out a little bit more. But I want to keep it as intense as possible, especially in those areas. So I'll spread it out, but I'll also make sure that some of it is still very opaque and bright. Now that I'm satisfied with my background, I'll start working with my pens, markers, and some additional paint. Most notably, that gold I love so much. I love to dot some dark ink over even the dark spots in my painting and even though they don't jump out at you because they're covering an area of the painting that's already dark, they do add an element of texture and when you look at it in a certain light you do catch the darkness of these little dots and so I do like to add them over these dark areas because it, it adds a little bit more visual interest and uh, it really draws the viewer to come in a little bit closer to see what is happening in all the different areas of the painting. Now I'm feeling compelled to start also adding some contrast using my white pen. The time has now come for me to start adding some gold. Star gold remains my very favorite iridescent color and so I tend to use it a lot in my paintings and with the colors in this background it really marries well. So I purposefully didn't tell you what the inspiration for my painting was. And I'm wondering if you can guess what it is that I used as um, the spark for my imagination in this painting. It's time for me to remove the tape and move in a little bit closer. You may or may not have guessed that my initial inspiration for this painting was some cracks in the pavement. Of course, my painting looks completely different than the cracks I saw on the pavement, but it was a great place for me to start. The most fun part of the process, other than creating this painting, of course, was just exploring my imagination. Where do you look for inspiration? As always, I'm so thankful you've decided to join me on this journey. Thank you again for watching. I hope you have a wonderful week, and happy creating!